This video will give examples of the kinds of molecules that belong to the different point groups described in the previous video. Um, as always in this uh, chapter, I'm going to recommend for practice that you use the Symmetry at Otterbein website where you can see a lot of these things and explore them to your heart's desire, uh, very conveniently arranged within different kinds of point groups for visualization purposes. Okay, so we'll start with the linear groups D infinity H and C infinity V. So things like homonuclear diatomics are D infinity H, H2, and O2. Also things like CO2, where the carbon is a central atom, and acetylene, C2H2, or ethyne. Those are all D infinity H. C infinity V molecules would be those that don't have a mirror plane perpendicular to that C infinity axis. Things like HCN, carbon monoxide, hydrogen fluoride, or a hydroxide anion. So then we have the cubic groups, which are very high symmetry uh, special case types molecules. Icosahedral, IH, is something like C60, a buckyball. OH, octahedral, the same symmetry as a cube. Things like SF6, uh, molybdenum, central atom molybdenum bound to six CO uh, carbon monoxide ligands, which are, uh, which are linearly arranged to that central atom, uh, six cyano ligands bonded to a central iron, things you see uh, frequently in those types of organometallic uh, compounds. TD, tetrahedral molecules like CH4, methane, ammonium, NH4+, or carbon tetrafluoride, CF4, uh, then I'm going to look at the very low symmetry groups, things with no elements of symmetry besides identity, like C1, uh, like this molecule with four different ligands around a central sp3 carbon. This molecule here in this conformation where I have four different ligands bonded to each carbon. Uh, CI, where it only has an inversion center. So notice that if I invert through this center of, of mass here that this F goes with there. This H goes to there, that CL goes to there. So this has an inversion center only and identity for CI. And CS, planar molecules that only have that specific element, HOF, um, HCOF, uh, chlorofluorobenzene, um, uh, this naphthalene with a fluorine, things like that. Um, DNH groups. So D2H would be something like uh, ethene, C2H4 planar with uh, several mirror planes and C2 axes. 1,3-difluorocyclobutadiene, um, uh, see the planar molecule with several C2s and several uh, sigmas, as well as an inversion center. D3H, like planar borane, BH3, the cyclo, uh, let's see, cyclo propa di. I'm, I'm blanking on the name right now, but it's the, the cation of a three membered uh, aromatic ring. All right. Um, then something like eclipsed ethane, where these hydrogens are all directly across from one another. You have a sigma H there relative to the C3. D6H, something like benzene hexafluorobenzene, coronine, principal C6 axis, mirror plane, lots of perpendicular C2s, etc. Um, the DND groups are somewhat hard to visualize. Things like allene, where these are splayed and perpendicular to the other set of hydrogens. D3D, uh, staggered ethane, where it kind of looks like two triangles staggered on top of each other from the side. D2 groups are very hard to visualize and even harder to draw, as I learned trying to draw this mess of a molecule. Um, so they have three perpendicular C2s, but really no other elements. It's hard to visualize, which is why Otterbein is so useful. D3 would be ethane that is not eclipsed, not staggered, but sort of offset to a small degree. So imagine like a 20 degree offset here. That would be D3 on this Newman projection. C2V is fairly common. Water, F2O, formaldehyde, paradifluorobenzene, uh, C2, and two perpendicular planes. 
sorry, C2 and 2 parallel mirror planes. C3V, ammonia, nitrate, 135 uh, trifluorobenzene, lots of things like that. C3H um, would be this boric acid, how it's in a plane, but these uh, kind of looks like the rudders of a propeller with all these BOH bond angles. And then the exceptionally hard to visualize like S4, which are like uh, the 12 crown 4 ether. A lot of crown ethers have SN point groups. And C2, like hydrazine and the ground state of H2O2 hydrogen peroxide. So I, rec I recommend Otterbein highly, highly, cannot recommend it highly enough for the very tough to visualize point groups like CN, SN, DN, and DND. Whereas a lot of these others, you can see most of the symmetry elements in a 2D representation, but there's some inherent non-two-dimensionality uh, to those specific kinds of point groups. So our next video will be looking at how, given a specific molecule, we can look at a systematic flow chart asking ourselves questions to classify what is the point group of this particular molecule.